Sobering news, one week after Hurricane Helene ripped through the southeastern seaboard, the death toll has rised to over 200 people, 215 uh, as of Thursday evening. A couple things we know, uh, about a half of the deaths were in North Carolina, hundreds are still missing, and over a million people without power. I will drop links into the news stories as we go through this, but I wanted to touch upon the effect of amateur radio through this right up front because there are still people that need help right now. Now, my being far away from the disaster area means that I don't know the particulars of what's what it's like on the ground. So we're largely taking this from information I picked up from people that are there and news stories. I will update the description of this video with any links to charities or relief efforts that have proven that they are effective in this area. I am very cautious of giving a link out to a group that may not put as much of the money as they can in the hands of the people that need it for the relief from Hurricane Helene. While editing this video, I did hear back from Thomas Witherspoon, K4SWL over at QRPer.com. He is in the disaster area. Thankfully, his family, extended family as well, is okay. But he did give me some feedback that one relief group, which is an NGO that's doing a lot of work in this area, is Crisis Response International. I will drop the link in the video description. Also, the Red Cross and numerous churches and smaller organizations. So while I have the link for Crisis International or Crisis Response International, you can find out about the local Red Cross, the local churches, but that might be best served if you work through someone that is closer to the disaster and you might be able to facilitate supporting them in some capacity. So with that said, Amateur Radio has actually done a fantastic job. I have been listening, and I'm just going to mention this right up front because it's the easiest way to get started. I've been listening to the W4HTP repeater 145.350. I will have a link in the video description as well for that if you are in the area and you think you can hit that repeater. They've been doing a fantastic, fantastic job of relaying traffic. Deserving of a specific shout out is K2DMG. I just heard him as net control at their 7 p.m. net there in North Carolina. He did a fantastic job. He also worked traffic through multiple people. One person was providing information of where airdrops are being coordinated with helicopters and that they need amateur radio operators to go to the airfields, the ad hoc airfields, to work comms. They need them now. So if you can access that repeater, I will be dropping information in the video chat so you can find it. And please do avail yourself. Whiskey Niner, Sierra Kilo, uh, Haywood County Amateur Radio Emergency Services Team. Uh, we received a message today at the uh, Haywood EMS uh, Field Command uh, Center that uh, came from an operation that's flying helicopters loaded with relief supplies. Uh, they have established an airfield in Canton uh, in Haywood County, but they are uh, flying now to destinations north of Ashland. Net control, KO4. Papa Whiskey X-Ray in Spartanburg. We're looking for standby stations for amateur radio or emergency communicators to be at the destination locations and one in Canton so that they can get uh, messages back to their um, staging area in Canton as to what supplies are needed. The repeater in question is W4HTP. Again, repeater books your friend in this case. I'll try and be as honest as possible. I might have misspoke on that previous repeater being W4HTP. It could be N2GE. I will try and link this as well in the video description so you guys can find all the information uh, as you're looking through or looking for a repeater. So what has helped look like with amateur radio operators reaching out and communicating with others? wellness check-ins for people that have gone missing or are unable to be communicated to from family, missing persons reports, reports of outages of traffic. Keep in mind, a lot of the areas impacted from this hurricane have lost access to their common roads or any accessibility in some areas. K4SWL over in his blog, QRPer.com, talking about the aftermath because he is in that area. He's actually been uh, running net control a little bit of time on the repeater we just mentioned. This is the vehicle egress and access that they have in some cases. Absolutely harrowing to get anything in and out. That is why they've resorted to mules and helicopter drops, which are some of the most effective ways to get aid to these individuals that are hurt, needing supplies, without food, without water. I will drop links to all of these notes in the description. Don't worry, so you guys can follow along.
Now, most concerning about all of this is the relief effort. Where's the government in all of this? Well, of course, they're there and there are people providing aid, but the dispersed nature of some of these areas makes it difficult for them to get to where they're going and also to be able to communicate to the people that need help. Again, these people have been without power for over a week in some cases, and many of them, uh, most that were without power are also without internet because likely they're getting their internet out of some kind of local power that they run from inside their home. Worst news still, FEMA has run out of money in the middle of hurricane season. This is August 15 reporting out of NBC News DFW. This is Dallas-Fort Worth. All of the efforts that would be coming from FEMA are going to be capped off at some point with difficulty because they're going to be out of funding, which is a major, major problem. Reiterated on October 2nd from the FEMA secretary that, yeah, funding shortfall for the rest of hurricane season, which is a major problem for those that are dealing with the effects of Hurricane Helene down in the south. In a small effort to try and help out in the smallest way we can, the Hammerdo Crash Course Discord did open up a Hurricane Helene chat, and uh, we got an update from Shadow Warrior. Shadow Warrior is, is within the area, and he's actually been to a couple of the disaster areas, but he dropped a, a lot of information. There's a lot of people providing information, so this is as of the 3rd. He's giving addresses and what's needed from the community. So what are they looking for? In need of excavators, shovels, helping hands, help with sorting and delivering supplies, Jackson Bridge Donation Center, volunteers still needed, bridge is closed, Closed for a short amount of time for cleanup, but that does not mean the donation site is closed. Fenders Farms, bring shovels, wear high boots, and extra change of clothes. Riverview Baptist Church, need volunteers to help clean up the church. 8 a.m., you can be shuttled with van from the Love Chapel Christian Church in Riverview. Cherry Grove Baptist Church, need volunteers to help sort supplies. Unico County uh, EME, Unico High School, need volunteers, caregiving, house cleaning, pet care, small debris team, large debris team, chainsaw team, and resource support team at the Happy Valley High School need volunteers around the clock to help sort donations. These posts are uh, happening all the time on the Hammer to Crash Course. I'm not trying to sell our Discord at all, but uh, there are a number of people that are close to what's going on out there, and they're willing to go out there and help, and they're providing information. So if you're curious, you can find that uh, right here if you go to the chat room, Hurricane Helene. Now, Shadow Warrior also posted some of his images from his time out in the disaster area, and, and let's look at these. This is Little Germany Road, absolute destruction. And remember, guys, it's also the fast-moving water that they're dealing with, and that's where a lot of the deaths are coming from, and you can see that here. That is an absolute uh, disaster. Roads completely destroyed. Just just look at the power of, of this. And, and sure, that's some cleanup, possibly pushing things off of a road, but uh, just look at the sheer power of, of tearing apart all of the structures, the wood, the houses. Some houses saved, others completely destroyed. Absolutely harrowing. And such a beautiful part of the country, too, and just absolutely disheveled from all of this. So sad. Thank you, Shadow Warrior, for continuing to post updates. And uh, he's he's going back out there again next week, as are a number of other people. And I applaud you for the work you continue to do. Just amazing you taking the time. I talked to him briefly via dis direct messenger, and he told me he can't just sit by and not do anything. So he's going back out after already being out there to help. And I know that he's a uh, part of the S2 underground community, and they also have an information set up. Uh, I don't know enough of the information on that, but if you go to the website or his YouTube channel, S2 Underground, I'm sure you can find out more information as well. And information is always key in times like these. Again, amateur radio operators, all radio operators have been asked to serve in some capacity if they can. Of course, do as the Romans do if you're getting involved in a radio net of some kind. If you hear people talking, understand what the lingo is, how they're talking, what they're saying. Work with them, not against them. And wait your turn to talk. There will be time, I promise. Just, you know, follow along with the protocol. A couple more updates for news posted by Ace. Looks like a Facebook group from Mary Grace Media. Ham Radio, there is little to no phone or electrical service in many sections of western Northern Carolina. If you can find a ham radio operator that reaches the Mount Mitchell repeater at 145.190 megahertz, they can do wellness relays. You will need their full address. You can also request a wellness check on the Charlotte, North Carolina, 4 K4ITL Memorial 
145.350 repeater, and there is a Facebook group for that. And it deserves repeating as many times as I can say it. The local outreach and the communities coming together to help each other. Here's another post from Shadow Warrior in reply to somebody. That state guard, and from what I am hearing from the area, they only have four helicopters and a few trucks. There are more private helicopters bringing in supplies than the government can put together. And a comment there, all Operation Airdrop pilots back safe tonight. 140 people pulled out 26,000 pounds of supplies in, 152 Starlinks dropped. Just very impressive. That's amazing. Great job. And to get in front of any confusion, this is an emergency situation, and that means you can use your radio if it means protecting your life or the life of another person. And these are situations where people are still dying. The death toll is going up. Sadly, during the net that I was listening to at 7 p.m. on the North Carolina repeater with K2DMG as the net control, they changed from a posture of rescue to that of recovery, which uh, that's sad news. That means that they think at this point a lot of the people have passed that were going to pass, and they're now in the process of, of, of pulling lifeless people out of homes and structures or wherever they're found. That's the type of damage that happened here. Another thank you that came out for net control, K2DMG, has been rocking it. He explicitly said on the air the other day, I don't care if you have a license or not if you need help key up and we'll get you help paraphrased and that's the right thing to do life safely takes precedence over fcc rules by the way that's that's not a precedence over fcc rules the fcc clearly states that so this is this is a this is a just time that if you had a radio in your capacity and you had a capacity to use it capacity to use it being one of the most important things if you have a call sign great if not get your need out and don't clog up the net through those of you who have been involved with the net or recovery efforts at all i applaud all of you i feel like we owe k to dmg a beer that man should get taken care of for life if he needs beer and all this volunteer that he, volunteering he's done i was listening to the disaster recovery net in charlotte north carolina on the w4htp repeater today first hats off to the net control for doing a great job for so many hours and the hams that participated it seemed to be really well run and a fair amount of important traffic was handled it was interesting to hear an unlicensed operator and how smoothly it went i suppose under these conditions it would be a bona fide emergency and the unlicensed operator forgive there was a guy who was calling into the repeater from a local VFW, Veteran of Foreign Wars, post or other fraternal organization. He was trying to contact a specific person at the National Guard in hopes of getting a water truck. That's bad when you when when you, you, there's no clean water, right? Potentially in some of these communities. It takes out a ton of your local systems. The message was repeated and passed along when the net control asked for a call sign. The guy admitted he didn't have one. The net control didn't really say anything. And other than a phone call to the fellow in question, he says his message was relayed. Nothing else was heard of it. I don't know what the status of phones and internet was for the unlicensed operator, but admittedly, he handled himself well and didn't disturb the net. I was a little surprised that net control let it pass, but this was a terrible storm, and under the circumstances, there is no reason to get salty. Who knows, maybe a guy, the guy will get a ticket. I hope so. Now, there have been no shortage of YouTube videos of local news and different organizations putting out videos of how amateur how amateur radio is being used in the case of the disaster, particularly in North Carolina. North Carolina was was extremely battered from Helene. I want to leave you with this small clip of the net control to, down at W4HTP, which was the repeater I mentioned earlier. And, and they've been on the air since the beginning. They've been working this since the beginning. They've been trying to coordinate. And uh, I think it's really wise words from a person who's now been through it, has is living this, is still doing the net, some five days plus uh, when this all went down. This is now day five. And if you've taken any sort of classes or have read about what the, hu what the human body and the human mind starts to do at day five, day six, day seven, and beyond, without food and without water, it becomes a very, very dangerous situation. And we are starting to see a little bit of that. And if we can't get the supplies into these folks, it's only going to get worse. And we have to keep the roads clear and the impacted areas uh, free of any motorists so we can get those supplies in and the first responders in. Now, I 
am 100% on the guys I spoke to and the female I spoke to last night that we as a community of hams are wanting to help. We will never stop anybody or we will never ask anybody to stop. What you guys do in your neighborhoods and in your communities, that is up to you. I am not asking you to take direction from me, and I wouldn't take direction from a guy over radio either if I was in your shoes. So what you guys need to do is is, is on you, and you guys are in you guys are the ones in survival mode. Not a guy talking on his radio 120 miles away in Mooresville, North Carolina. So I want to make that perfectly clear. If you guys can help, don't listen to me. Go do what y'all need to do, by all means. And we thank you, and the people that you're helping, obviously, will thank you. So, moving forward. Again, I want to just give an amazing shout-out to K2DMG, as well as the, the myriad of other amateur radio operators who are out there helping. All radio operators. doesn't matter if you have a GMRS license and you're out there helping people. Good on you. An amazing job. Now, if you do find yourself in a situation where you have a radio and you don't know how to use it or you don't know where to listen, you don't know where to go, this video may not be the one. I'll try and link a card or something like that to, to one of my other videos to help you get set up. With like a Baofeng, you can kind of do the same thing with other radios. And if you can't reach the W4HTP repeater, which I mentioned earlier in the video, this is a resource. It's called repeaterbook.com. And if you are in the North Carolina area or Georgia or a disaster area in Florida, left-hand side of the screen under North American Repeaters, click that. And then when you're on Reader Peter Book and you see the United States here, just click on whichever state you're going to. In this case, let's go look at North Carolina. And then go ahead and scroll down. You're going to see the bands of operation. If you, if you want to just sort by bands, you can. But in this case, since it's a disaster that's localized to certain cities and counties, you can look for your town of interest here in the list. Or you can scroll down and you can look for counties. So if we go to, if we go back to up to Asheville or Asherville, Asheville, sorry, click on that. This is going to show us the repeaters that are in and around that area. So N2GE, which I mentioned earlier, is one of them. So the Broadcastify might be a little confusing for you. If you stick to the repeater book and look up the repeaters that way, it might be a little bit easier. Of course, you're going to need internet access to do that. Of course, if you are within an area where there is a disaster, you can always use your radio's scan function to be able to at least make sure you can hear the repeater and then determine what the PL codes may be and the offset plus or minus. And uh, Yeah, it's a tough situation to be in, but that is something you can do. My heart goes out to everybody that's having to deal with uh, yet another disaster, weather related or other, in this country. And I really hope that the needed care and supplies and support get to those individuals. To repeat, again, just to be a broken record at this point, I will be dropping all the links that I have access to in the video description. I will try and find an appropriate link a charity a relief service that your money can go the longest distance to help the people in the most amount of need if i do find that i will post it in the video description thank you so much for watching i'm josh ki6naz and truly 73 particularly those that are in a horrible situation i i hope you get out of it soon